Welcome, everyone, to the Tipped and Stiff podcast with your host, Kate Almarez and Jared Sturridge. Today, we have our very lovely guest, North Warren. What up? Hey. How's it going? How's it going? Who are you and uh, what do you do? I'm Luke and I write songs for North Warren. <laughs> I'm Bailey and I drum for North Warren. Very cool. Now, <laughs> I saw you, saw both of you at a house show in Milwaukee the first yeah. time. I was... Uh, I was dressed up as the Joker, and yes. I felt embarrassed that I was like one of five people who dressed up. And my, and my friend uh, Henry was uh, Harley, Harley Quinn. Quinn. Yes, yeah. yes. Some people were very yeah. thrown off by that. You guys he wanted, looked, to, he wanted to commit. Yeah. You guys looked great, yeah. man. My my really girlfriend good. was excited for the people that actually wore a costume. She was like, "You should make this Halloween themed party." Right. And we kind of did that last minute. So. Right. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> I wore I wore a bathrobe on stage. <laughs> cool. no, you y'all kill, killed it. Yeah, for thanks, sure. man. That was, it was very fun. I mean, there was such a tight knit community. Mm-hmm. I mean, every, it felt like there was a lot of key people who really was just like supporting everybody, getting the yeah. crowd up there. I mean, you, you know, you go to a show and you have like people who, like, sometimes you need people to be told, "Hey, you have permission to move." Yeah, yeah, and people forget, and so like you guys had that, mm-hmm. you got the energy, the right songs. People knew your songs, and just were going crazy. I mean, one person was uh, crowd surfing at some point. Which <laughs> yeah, was really funny. yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. That was my buddy Mason. Actually, they, yeah, they lifted him up, and I think that was during our cover of Blister in the Sun. Yes, that was yeah. very. That was cool. That was a cool. Co- <laughs> you never hear people no. cover that, but man, that is such a that just moves. Yeah, that was really yeah, cool. That was a- it was a fun cover. Yeah. It's such a simple cover. song, too. So we were like, let's throw something in there, right. you know? You showed me the video from the show, and I remember being like, God, I haven't been to, like, a real house show before. <laughs> like, a real rough and tumble. <laughs> yeah. So, like, just sweat all over. It's like, Dude, was- I really... And, like, then we went to a few shows, a few concerts from, like, bigger, like, bands from out of state that we know. And I would say, okay, maybe we can, we can like, go crazy. And then yeah. people were just kind of... You know, just mm-hmm. not just into it at all. And the energy at like a house show is just so much cooler, I feel like. Way more fun at just like, we're, yeah, we're going to just take this room and everyone get in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so yeah. much more yeah. fun. That's, um, I agree. That's my favorite, man. Those house shows, they have the highest energy and you can just party. Right. You know? Very cool. Yeah. Now, you just released an EP, correct? We did, yeah. We released Glue um, at the tail end of August. Right. And uh, we've just been kind of playing shows and practicing ever since. And it's been nice because before Glue came out, we hadn't played a show in a year and a half. Right. Um, so now we're booking shows left and right. You know, we have like, I think six coming up until like mid January. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. it's really exciting. Um, the shows themselves have been super fun. Like the reception's just been great. Like, Every time we have a show, I'm like surprised by how many people are actually showing up to these things, right. and it's like really good time. That's cool. That's yeah. really good. Man, that's cool. Yeah, dude. We've been playing this show in forever because oh our band died. It. Our band died like over the course of six <laughs> months, it. like oh, one by oh, one. It we yeah. had just started falling apart, uh, and then we were like, we were like, let's make new music, like different kinds of music. Yeah, but it was just <laughs> me and him. Yeah. So we're like dying to be able to get up and like just kill yeah. Oh, was, you know? yeah dude I was telling our last guest um, same as Young Trench uh, about the show I went to I was like yeah man they had like people who were rapping and they had like this band they had bands and stuff and like everyone was into it mm-hmm. was like that's yeah. it. he was like really because he's a very uh, <laughs> he's like he's very like the roster should be the same yeah. across the board I was like yeah man everyone was having a blast and mm-hmm. he's like damn I gotta check mm-hmm. something like that out and I was like you do I, I think you really yeah. do but that was it was cool. This is the first time I've been to like really like five dollars at the door type shit. Uh-huh. And uh, the energy was cool. People were into it. And I just I was uh, meeting you because you did a, a lot of music and just watching the band with everybody. It just mm-hmm. you, you, the band North Warren very uh, glued together. Yeah, you, you yeah. Guys, you're very comfortable. I mean, have you? How long have you guys been playing together? Well, um, we've actually had a a changing lineup throughout the years too. Um, but now we have a little bit more of a solidified unit. Um, and it's, it's me, Bailey, our synth player, Donnie, and then, uh, Will, who is our newest member on bass. Um, so now that we've been able to start practicing regularly as that lineup, I think 
um, we've been really able to solidify things. Um, but that particular lineup is pretty fresh. I mean, it's only what, like six months. Yeah. We've played two shows. Yeah. T- two or three now. Yeah. Maybe I'd, I'd, two at the most, I think. Mm. Yeah. Well, I played that comedy club last night. Oh, that's true. You <laughs> played a show with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you played a comedy club. Yeah, what dude. Was it, like? was, it was an interesting, uh, change of energy i should right. say because because we played um me and my my bass player will we played um four songs in between these like improv sets so it was like cool my job is to make people not laugh <laughs> you know it's like yeah. you get up i, really I get the like, easy job in the right. heads in your head song and you're just like <laughs> yeah. no one everyone's there to laugh or like and you're just like yeah, I'm getting all emo playing yeah, my songs, right. and everybody's just right like, emo, "I want to drink beer and laugh right now." Yeah, right? <laughs> no, right. It, it was fun though. Uh, it, it felt like I was playing at a coffee shop or something. You know? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I saw because I met another band, uh, Alternative Radio. I believe that's what mm-hmm. it called. It was very sad to see that uh, their equipment got stolen. So much. Yeah, stolen. shortly yeah. after yeah. that house show, actually, um, they started a GoFundMe. Um, I think their bass and I'm, I'm not sure what else. Some microphones. Some microphones got that's stolen. That's the nightmare. Yeah, yeah that's a that's bummer. That's the man. nightmare. Dude, that's a gun at the door for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, <laughs> real finding some people after that yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, if so, like, really. Like, I just think, because, you know, the whole thing, like, stacking the car up with all your shit, mm-hmm. right? Putting all the stuff in the van, dude. I would be rubbing for prints, okay? <laughs> I would be bribing cops. Looking for <laughs> strands of hair. It would not go well with <laughs> Knocking on doors. <laughs> no, because there's, so there's such an effort into putting together, one, the band itself. Right. Like, learning how to play your instrument, but then, mm-hmm. like, getting all of the extra shit that you really need and then oh, yeah. mm-hmm. someone just takes it like yeah. they're obviously they don't know that that's yeah. all that went into it right. they don't know how how stressful that was like not being able to find a mic or being able to like losing chords you like one bass and they take your bass you have no right. bass. you can't play yeah, <laughs> yeah. logistically yeah. and financially you're in shambles Dude, yeah imagine, imagine being a drummer and someone just takes like the foot pedal just like something annoying like yeah. really annoying. Just, they horrible. only take the <laughs> snare or, or like only take one the of the drum. stand one of the legs for like a floor tom <laughs> they just <laughs> right <laughs> so, oh no we've never um I, I i've heard that happening and it's sad to see when it happens to so, like someone local a smaller band yeah dude because that's the worst but it's cool that the like i did see like they people did give them money and that's really cool that they have like a community to support mm-hmm. them that way but damn like I, damn. I that i always like we did like little shows around here and mm-hmm. i never really worried about anything happening because there was always like uh we would do like festival stuff yeah and so we, there's always like security mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. never like we never we weren't old enough to do bars and stuff yet right because uh mm-hmm. we started when we were like 17 and 18 19 and mm-hmm. i was really like for a long time nervous about booking a show mm-hmm. because i was just like i loved like you fall in love with your gear mm-hmm. you fall in love mm-hmm. with your stuff man like yep. like just the tones of them even like yeah. when it comes to like a specific pedal and like the idea that someone like could even steal it for a moment like stressed me out so much yeah. i was like I, i'd be like you know, my other bandmates like we should go here and here here but like i don't want to i don't want to <laughs> do that no 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 that, because i was just that's terrifying yeah i mean especially house shows man because it's like you get done playing your set and you have to like tear your gear off stage and you can either find a safe place in the house quote you know safe or you can run it out to your car and finish out the show but then it's it's like oh is my shit gonna get stolen from my car now right you know or on the way car all night yeah right or on the way to the car i mean like that's true there was a show at fusion that one of our friends played and like they were parked like two blocks and around the corner from this bar, from this bar, and they were just like hauling it and dragging it, like just like it was just out in the open, like somebody could easily just like yeah, corner yeah. it. I mean, not that that would always happen, but could you yeah. never know, man. Yeah. No, eventually everyone's gonna have a. Uh you know, Ford's ending their production of like gasoline cars by like twenty thirty five. So eventually, everyone's gonna have like these Elon Musk esque cars. Yeah, and like you're gonna have you're gonna have like the electric van. You're gonna have all your stuff, and anyone touches it, I mean, they're gonna get shocked. I mean, it's <laughs> just gonna be like, <laughs> they're gonna be fingerprints. Like, they're gonna open the, the door, and it's like, yeah. No, but like that. I I wonder if um I wonder if somebody's made like because I always thought about 
uh, what are they called? The, uh, the things you put in your wallet, like if you lose your wallet, you can like have it on your phone. Like a tracker, tracker or something. Yeah. Right. I don't know, like an ID. I always thought like, man, if I want to go like gigging and stuff, like I want to put those like all over my stuff yeah. because of something like, yeah, because I should get first some of all, just throw in my, my gear bags. <laughs> right, throw, throw in all in the gear yeah. bags mm-hmm. because then when they do bring it home, I will be there waiting. Yeah. I will just be like, on, uh, like, like hey, bitch. It's <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> like driving with the, the um, map in your hand, the yeah. gun on the side right. of the seat. I'll just, yeah. be on the living, I'll just be sitting in the living room. I, like, they won't open it right away. And it'll be like the back of my head. So like they'll walk in and just like stop. And I'll, like, I'll flick the lights. And I'm like, I've been waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> like we don't need to talk to the police. Yeah. We can settle this ourselves. Um, <laughs> but, all right. Um, yeah. You have a uh, you have a show coming up. Is the, the one in December the closest one coming up, or do you have something before that? Yeah, so we actually have three in December. Um, but our our one our show that is coming the soonest is December fourth. We're playing Bremen Cafe again. Very cool. Um, yeah, I got Family Vacations and the Fall Sound playing with us, so that should be fun. Um, and then the tenth, we're playing Company Brewing, and the eighteenth, we're playing Kochanski's. Very cool. So very cool. It'll be a busy month. Busy month. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah but good. good. Yeah, it was a, super not stuff. a busy year and a half. Exactly. So. <laughs> at all. Yeah. Um, do you know the band Diet Light at all? Yeah, dude. We mm-hmm. just uh, played. A sh- we're playing with them at Kochanski's. Are you? Okay, yeah. Cool. And we played with them at Bremen um, mm, the f- first time we played. Yeah. I. Before I even went to the house show, before I even like knew about any bands in Milwaukee, uh-huh. I follow, I think it's the guitarist, he might be the singer. He's a guitarist. I don't know if he's the singer on TikTok. Oh, before yeah. Before I even knew <laughs> oh, Diet no Light. Shit. Cause he does That's so cool. He does um uh every day he plays the little uh lick from Weezer's Buddy Holly, the do 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 do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's on like day 450. <laughs> no way. And he's, really? he's waiting for Rivers Kyomo to duet him, and it's <laughs> never happening. <laughs> but like, I remember you you had like a post with that, and I saw Diet Light. I'm like, why do I know that? I clicked on it, and I saw the guy. I'm like, yeah. that's fucking TikTok. <laughs> I know that guy. I was just like, why is small world? I was like, I should never be close to this person yeah dude <laughs> <Any> fiscal relation <laughs> <laughs> they're super sick man yeah i think uh, max the the singer right now yeah i don't know if that's the guy you're talking about but he's he's like a roadie right now for a touring band which is cool and i i saw um after i played that comedy show last night we went out to bremen because shuby was playing another killer band i love them um but the dudes from Diet Light were there and we were just talking, like seeing what's up, talking about our shows coming up. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's the cool thing, man. It's like, once you're like kind of in that that circle in Milwaukee, it's like a really like supportive and it feels like a tight knit community. Cool, that's good. Know? Do you feel, um, don't say names. <laughs> Do you feel like there's anyone who like really tries to ruin that? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily tries to ruin that, but maybe they think they're like above it right. or like they don't want to, like they think they're better than supporting the other local acts. Right. Yeah, you'd be surprised how, um, even as a small community in Kenosha, how some people get a little silly Yeah, they that. get that get ego little, trip. Yeah. Well, <laughs> our last guest, um, that we had, I mean, the dude is like about to be very big Mm -hmm. Uh, i think one of his top songs is like seven million spotify listens like uh, and he came on mm -hmm. and it's like we were talking i was like i was talking to before i'm like i really appreciate you coming on like we're a small podcast and he's like yeah man he's like i don't care (laughs) it's like uh, it's like and we were talking about that he's like yeah man there are really people out here who will get like ten thousand listens on the song and think they're drake yeah it's ridiculous yeah man and then when you bring it to like bands Mm -hmm. it's like it's almost gets like even more toxic in some cases and like it's good like that will be one out of Mm ten you know what i mean like the rest Mm -hmm. of the nine will be like we're all in this together yeah everyone needs to Mm -hmm. make money everyone needs to get out there (laughs) everyone wants to go on tour but that one band will be like we're the shit we're yeah, gonna be and then right. it's like well who do you want to be and they're like we're gonna be oasis it's like okay well that was 30 years ago yeah <laughs> like, I get it, man. But <laughs> yeah. it's like it's not even um like respectable mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's like because so many people that i've met in like local scenes are very um 
they just want their own thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? They want to live that dream. They want to be mm-hmm. like the tour bus, go and see the city, like I got a community. Like no one, there's some people who are like, I'm going to be this. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some people who are like delusionally safe about that. Cause there's yeah. like a, a little, there's, a, you need a, to start a band, you have to be a little crazy. Mm-hmm. You do. Mm-hmm. And one mm-hmm. thing that's weird about artists is that all the other people you meet, you go, Hey, you're really cool. We're all in this together, but you're also insane. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird because it starts off as like this, this idea. It's like, you have to believe in yourself for a really long time until like anybody catches on and they're like, Oh, I can get down with this. Right. And it's like, you feel crazy. Cause it's like, no, this has potential. Like I'm right. going to flesh this out. And then hopefully down the line, like people start, you start gaining an attraction to that. But, um, I don't know. So it's like weird because you have to have this, this confidence in the beginning, but then you don't want to like get a good reception and then let it go to your head. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, also there's the whole thing with, uh, you can't make a good song before you make a bad song. Like you have to have a, 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 a courage, the courage enough to embarrass yourself. Mm-hmm. Your first mm-hmm. show is not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like your first show. Cause you have to like good. believe in yourself and make shit when you know that you're bad at shit. Yeah. When you know right. that you're still yeah. pretty. And like, then on top of that, you have to show others. You mm-hmm. have to, cause that's how you make, you get people to listen to music. Like you really have to let people into that. Yeah. You have to really put yourself out there. Like, right. Yeah. Truly. Just what just believe in know. yourself that you can do it. And yeah. Right. And, and, it happen. and then there's so much of that as well. Like, um, there's a business side to it. Yeah. And it's really interesting meeting some bands who don't engage, like think of it like that. Mm-hmm. Cause like I, there's a, some bands here in town where like I'll talk to them and uh, it's usually the lead. It's mm-hmm. always usually like the person who's really like writing a lot. Yeah. Who like, well I'll meet them and I'll be like, well what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And like so much of it is in like fantasy land. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's like, hey man, you want to be, you're an artist and mm-hmm. you want to make art but you also live in America. Right. So you're a businessman. Right. But you're, uh, you're running a business. I mean, these, these magic numbers on Instagram are what lead to you, people seeing your art. Mm-hmm. Like if you really want people to see, you have to run these, these magic numbers up. That percentage mm-hmm. change needs to change at a certain rate yeah. every month. And like, it's about grinding out shows. It's about putting content out. It's about, you know, taking advantage of whatever you can and networking yeah. too. And like, um, it's sad to see like a good artist not do that. Right. Yeah. I was actually having this conversation yesterday with my, my bass player. And, um, I thought it was sort of an interesting paradox because like peop to me personally, music is like the perfect form of art because there's no like premeditative assumptions when you consume it. It's just what you hear. And then you reciprocate some sort of feeling from it. Mm-hmm. And that's like a very pure thing to me. But to be able to do that well and communicate some emotions, you have to also like aesthetic matters more than it should playing right. like just the way you look matters more than it should. And like the way you talk to people and it's like, there's a lot of like vanity within the promotion aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think a lot of bands are just like, I don't give a shit about that. I just want to play music and it's cool because whatever, like, you don't care about that, but also don't you want more people to be listening to you? And right. You know, it's, it's cool to have that hidden gem factor, but also it's like, why not get it out there as much as you can? Right. Well, people need to see that you're cool. Yeah. They want to see you and be like, that person's cool. This Mm -hmm. band's cool. Look at the way this band's dressed. Yeah. Even down to the color, like even like the color of their instruments. Uh Sometimes you look at like the way that somebody's dressed and the instrument doesn't match. Yeah. Or even people think about that. uh Mm -hmm. Or even brands, like what kind of amps they have, or drums they have. Yes. Yep. It's like, I feel like, sorry, when it comes to like the hidden gem thing, you, I want to, I want to say something about that. Like you can't really try to be a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. Like you can't like, purposely do that right the same way that is say if you're traveling somewhere you've never really been before and you want to have some serendipitous experience that you mm-hmm. hope that like oh what if i just met some random person and like we talked for hours yeah. or like you run into this interesting place or whatever and you, you some sort of you know incident that makes you feel like the universe is mm-hmm. choosing you in the moment <laughs> you can't you can't 
go seeking that it never happens when you do it just that's the that's the the paradox of that you're Mm. you can't decide to be a hidden gem everyone else decides it for you exactly Exactly. yeah you can't you can't I'm going to be a cult hit. Okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you can't make that decision for yourself. <laughs> right. That's not how that works. That's right. not how that works. But with oh. that being said, I think you should just get past that. Like, if you're not into that, like, oh, I, I hate self-promoting or stuff. Like, you should just chip away at it because why not just, like, try to reach an audience as best as you can. Right. Um, and I think it, it bears fruit in the long run if you're consistent with it. Like, I mean, this podcast is a good example and just like anything really it's it takes a lot of consistency and that goes from playing your first show and sucking to playing 50 more and then getting better right well people think it's going to happen in months yeah it takes years Mm -hmm. yeah for some it can deter motivation to jump in to the the ocean of that business side do it all at once right for some it's like a it's like a sink or swim kind of thing and people Mm -hmm. more thrive off of that but i feel like for a lot of people who are coming from the place of one of a, a feeling like it's going to compromise their integrity to be more business minded about it. Yeah. They, they have to decide at what rate they can get into that. Mm. Cause they're going to be doubting that process, that business process, thinking it's this, this leech, on yeah. it. but no, you can really use it. It's <laughs> a, it's an interchangeable thing. It's a tool. It's a tool like anything else. Yeah. It's all tools. These social media things, these mm-hmm. TikToks, um, electricity, whatever. electric instruments, like <laughs> they're all <laughs> people, tools, you know? And, and, uh, you know, one thing, the comment on what, how music is very human, I mean, or sorry, the art, mm-hmm. right? I find what I like about it is it's very human. Yeah. You, you, because these, these instruments, you know, yeah, you could go to the, you could go in the woods and find things and start banging things together, right? <laughs> but you can't, you're not going to find an electric guitar growing on a tree, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the creation of 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 percussive instruments, mm-hmm. right? The creation of string instruments, the way that we, like, it's really strange when you think about the fact that you can listen to a chord and you can go, "That's a sad chord," yeah, like that's mm-hmm. really weird, right? It doesn't really, and that's so intrinsically human right right for and it's like how some songs like i i i always find it interesting when uh songs that have really depressing lyrics Mm -hmm. but it's a happy song Mm -hmm. and people don't hear it like that's so weird to me you know (laughs) but like that's what i try to do a lot man. yeah (laughs) no and it's and it's and it's cool i mean i like that and uh uh, i like the ep by the way thank you listen to it. it's very good Uh, and also i think one thing I like is seeing it live and then listening to it later. You could kind of have that. I know what they're about. Mm-hmm. I know how they perform. Because yeah. you, you never listen to a song that you're like, you listen to an album made by an artist you like, and you listen to one song, you're like, eh, I don't really care. But then you see it perform live, and then now you're like, you listen to that song, yeah. and you're like, that was the shit. There's I was new wrong energy. from the get-go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That yeah was you start awesome. to see like how they like meant it to be and like see like the emotion behind it. Right. And, mm-hmm. All that. Yeah. Um, like... Um, I saw Weezer in like 20... <laughs> I love Weezer. I'm a huge Weezer fan. Yeah, dude, Weezer. That, um, I saw them in like 2017 and they played this song, uh, Hash Pipe. I don't uh-huh. know if you've ever heard it before, but yep. it's... Uh, when I was 17, I was like, this is the dumbest fucking song I've ever <laughs> listened to. And then I heard it live and I was like, no, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. It's just like those guitar... Like when you hear like like chugging coming from like that junk, 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 junk coming out mm-hmm. of like six you know four by twelves so you're yeah. like no this is the best song I've ever written <laughs> <laughs> I uh the dumbest thing cause you know, like one thing that's interesting like, like band saying like you get uh, I don't know if you have this problem but like people getting addicted to like gear mm-hmm. and uh I remember yeah. the most atrocious uh, I think my the worst I ever got I had a I had an EVH 5150, a 50 watt, which is like, uh, which is Eddie Van Halen's yeah. like Fender it's custom loud stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a full stack. Oh I shit. Had a, I had a, I had a, I had a 1960 B and a 1960 A. Melting Ooh, people's would, faces with that. <laughs> dude. dude we would, uh, and my uh, bass player at the time had a, like a Ampeg SVT, not the classics. It wasn't mm-hmm. two, but it was that it's the one where the preamps are two, but the post amps aren't. Okay. So like the wattage is higher, like mm-hmm. the, the wattage out of those, uh, like the classics are like 300 watts, but they sound amazing because mm-hmm. it's tube amp stuff. But the, the ones that they have beside it are like a thousand. Right. So she had, uh, that going into an Ampeg eight by 10 and we were <laughs> making like, 
we it would just be like me and her and it would be Jared on the keys and we had a saxophone player and we would just be like God boom boom yeah. just like you know just doom metal shaking, like shaking the house we were in the yeah. I mean like you would go to the second floor and it'd be like you would hear like the glass yeah, yeah. shaking up like something up there <laughs> and then it would be Jared and our saxophone player making like uh they would be playing um what's it called it's uh like the desert um, scales, you know, where it yeah, sounds like where really like kind of like Arabic. Middle Eastern kind of scales. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scaling so we would just be playing this like Doom Stoner Rock stuff, <laughs> yeah. shaking the I'm house. Like a, I think I'm like a Behringer MS1, this like from like the 80s, this synthesizer that you can pitch it like really thin. Yeah. And like that along with a saxophone was the most haunting haunting sound you guys like, had to be stoned while you're doing this right <laughs> like, honestly that no. around that time we weren't we never we weren't no, smoking yeah. right, we, right. we stopped and uh you would expect us to be <laughs> but like, <laughs> yes. like when you your your brain rattled the same yeah like you have oh yeah full same stack. same experience it's the same experience <laughs> your body starts vibrating yeah. the blood just starts yeah moving. and then you have the saxophone player playing like these desert noise like these like uh it sounds like you're moving through the desert and there's yeah. just like this just in a different the, universe it's like yeah. doom yeah. this death worm is coming for you type <laughs> shit um but that was like the last stuff that we experimented with in, the, in mm-hmm. a band setting but yeah that was the most ridiculous I got and I, I sold a lot of that stuff because uh, now the music that we make uh, uh, is not guitar heavy at all. Everything is okay. like MIDI. Yeah. We do. Uh, it was interesting because when we started, I, I didn't know how to play like the keyboard. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, you know, you get like that little uh, 16 key mm-hmm. MIDI thing and I'm just like, well, I'll figure it out. And like, he would get so mad at me because he's been playing since he was like eight mm-hmm. and I would be, I would uh, send him a song and what I would do, because I was bad at the key, uh, playing piano, is that I would just play the white keys and yeah. then I would uh, just transpose it. it. Just, I would yeah. just transpose it into where it needed to be. But hey, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, dude, it works. <laughs> it starts oh. with the, when you hear shit. Right? Yeah. Like, what did you guys grow up listening to? Dude, everything. Dude. Um, I was, I liked a lot of like heavy, heavier stuff. I still do. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, it was kind of all over the place growing up. Yeah. 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 Really young, it was like my dad showed me like Metallica and the Beatles and all the typical, you know, Led Zeppelin, right. Sabbath, all that mm-hmm. stuff. And that like really sparked my interest in music. And um, I don't know, high school, I was into like a lot of the like like 90s emo, like American football, uh, Empire, Empire, uh, and that kind of stuff. Empire. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, but I've also really loved punk rock throughout that whole thing so like garage rock mm-hmm. I, I love ty siegel yeah uh the, king giz king giz yeah <laughs> they're sick dude um, <laughs> king giz. the ocs uh mm-hmm. yeah there's just so many bands man dude animated violence yeah dude, if i'm ever like pissed about something <laughs> i go in my car i turn animated violence all the way all the way <laughs> my speakers are shit like it breaks the bass like yeah, it's yep. just it's just all treble <laughs> And it's just like scream. I oh, I love got that. The face I on love really. what they will Um I uh, I would fall asleep. I had three. I had a little CD player next to my bed, and this would be like in elementary. And mm-hmm. I had three CDs. It was um, uh, Pearl Jam's Ten, mm-hmm. uh, Black Eyed Peas. Now, the, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about? The green one, where it's like yeah. the green. Yeah, that one, and then uh, <laughs> Wings Greatest Hits. All right. So like really, and I I would fall asleep to. You are now rocking with Will I Am and, <laughs> <laughs> and like it's like I, as a kid, like are you like those songs. I, you know, as you grow up, you know, especially like not everyone had. Uh, everyone still had like flip phones and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like not everyone. I had an iPod in yeah. middle mm-hmm. school, but no one had smartphones yet. So like, as you get older and you start having the ability to like listen to music. And uh, I remember at the time the app store was really bad at finding like pirating music mm-hmm. apps. So you just look like free music downloader and like look yeah. at all the posts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I just remember my dad would play. Uh, my dad was always really in the Green Day and stuff like that, and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and to Weezer. And we would play. Uh, I, I got into Green Day because we had like the rock band uh-huh. Green Day. That was like the shit. Yeah, dude. Because that we would get the family together and friends, and we had like all two guitars. We we do the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then we grow up and listen to music. I remember the first time I got Spotify. I remember Weezer like being suggested and I listened to Say It Ain't So and I was like, 
like you have this epiphany <laughs> and you're like <laughs> like you just unlock that core memory <laughs> yeah. from like listening yeah. to it in the car yeah and, and i was like this is that is one thing that's weird because like the music that you grow up with when you find it later and you listen to it and when you start making it music mm-hmm. you put a nostalgia yeah dude. Into oh it yeah because you love it right my first memory as a human being is listening to music i was like three or four years old in my dad's car and i remember he had the beatles on cassette and the song love me do was playing awesome and i remember it like vividly that's and cool. like you're three, four years old. You don't remember anything. Like, right. you don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. my, my, you see a color that you'd never seen. It's like seeing a, a color you didn't know existed yeah. or something. Like, I grew up kind of listening to soundtracks a lot when I was a kid on this little speaker in mm-hmm. my room was for CDs. Like, a big one I remember was the Polar Express soundtrack. Like, I really <laughs> loved the music in that. I don't know what yeah, it's so dude. random. It was kind of all I had that I, that I knew. Uh-huh. And... I didn't really figure out that I liked rock until I had Guitar Hero on my DS. Mm-hmm. And there's this little like that little shit. Dude, yeah. I'll get tendonitis, <laughs> I'll get tendonitis from in my hand trying to play it. But then I, that's when I knew like, oh, you can actually, like, I don't know. It, just, I, it was like seeing the color I hadn't seen before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I started getting into. Then then I was getting older and and Spotify was a thing and and I was able to see music from like other parts of the country mm-hmm. that were part of the culture here yeah like different indie hip-hop r&b rock and stuff like that but then i was like bored of that mm-hmm. and kind of went back to a nostalgia i found music that made me feel nostalgic yeah but i'd never heard it before like i remember <laughs> hearing godspeed you black emperor yeah <laughs> they're the f sharp a sharp well i can't remember the, fir- the their first album but mm-hmm. i was like why do i feel like i've been in this album before yeah <laughs> isn't that weird like when you yeah. hear an album that you you just know right off the bat that you really love and it's like i feel like like I know this dude this yeah. past life shit that's yeah. why mm-hmm. that's like fucking spirits that's coming yeah dude. for sure no cause you listen yeah. I mean have you ever listened to worldly music <laughs> yeah. you know like you know like, and uh, uh, you secular to, music right and you uh, and <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, no like it, it feels um, you get this like haunting it's I don't know if haunting is the right word, but you do feel this like a spiritual connection. I like the, the I like the saying like you feel like you found a new color. Mm-hmm. Like that mm-hmm. really it's it's I mean that's what I love music because like uh I'm not good like I get why art is good. Mm-hmm. Like uh um what's it called? Not classical art. What's the actual like using expressive art? It doesn't matter. Like um, the fundamentals <laughs> of art? No, so, like, it's called okay. something. What? No, don't. <laughs> I don't know. You know, what like you trying to say? the Mona Lisa is considered, you know, it's art. Like a classic. That would be like a classic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> a masterpiece. It doesn't matter. But yeah, okay. <laughs> um, obviously, like the art that you see at like an Ashley Furniture is not real art. But like mm. expressive pieces are art. Talking about like corporate art you're talking about like like aesthetic (laughs) i'm already i fucked the whole thing up listen (laughs) (laughs) sorry it's every episode it's our it is every episode um (laughs) oh my god listen um do you um have you guys had any crazy shit happen on a show dude okay this last house show you guys were at I got to shout out my boy Turner. Um, nobody saw this because everybody was moshing, but my guy, he's a gymnast and he got on stage and he shotgunned a beer and then did a backflip and <laughs> nobody saw. Then <laughs> Nobody saw. There's a picture out there somewhere of him like midair, but the, everybody missed it. I, die lit. I That's saw, I saw, right. Right. I saw people commenting about that. Yeah. I was like, that didn't really happen. Dude, it happened. <laughs> what? Yeah. And you then, guys didn't even, was it I, while you were playing? Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. I, I saw it happen. I That's saw the funny. picture of it. I was like, oh uh-huh. shit, that actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> we, the, I, I've never had, we never had anything crazy. It shows the only crazy thing. Every time I go to an open mic for the first time the mm-hmm. first time I go to an open mic at that place something bad happens every time the <laughs> yeah. first time I went to go to tell about the fusion one dude, the first time I went to an open mic at uh, this bar in town called fusion I was uh, I was just like my friend was like let's go play there we'll play a little song and like let's just go see what it's about and we go there and like dude comedy is rough yeah comedians like I God bless them but also I they should burn in hell but like because <laughs> <laughs> like, like an early 
I hate when early comedians don't understand that they're not good enough to make really sensitive top topics funny. Mm-hmm. You know, so like the most boring cliche that really a lot of early comedians do is a joke about abortion. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've seen it so many times and it flops every time. So this guy gets up there, starts doing it. And he's just, you know, it's, he doesn't have like, he doesn't have a good syncopation with it. He like, there's not enough jokes in between like the story, you know, he's not connecting them. It's choppy. He's, it's mm-hmm. really choppy. Yeah. All of a sudden this guy in the back goes, move on. And the comedian's <laughs> like, fuck you. And he's like, you're in the, it's like, you're awful. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's all the way in the back of the bar. And the comedian <laughs> goes, I wish your mother would have got the abortion. Oh my and goodness. And the dude charges the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking oh charge it like grabs him. He's like, "What the fuck did you say about my mom?" Damn. And just screaming like the open mic people, you know, because they're on their yeah, they're on because the comedians are on the brink. The open mic host is on the brink as well. Yeah, yeah. they're going up there trying to break him up. Like half the people are getting up trying to drag this guy out. Like the cops yeah. are getting called. There's no security at an open no, mic. No, man. and they don't want to be on the news the next day. They no. don't want. And in Kenosha, they will. I mean, like, yeah. It's, and um, you know, that happens. Like, and then the, we go to creative space Mm -hmm. first time i go to the open mic Mm -hmm. first time we go there uh this guy's playing classical guitar it's pretty i don't give a fuck you know i'm just there (laughs) i'm watching and this dude comes in and uh uh, creative space doesn't have a bar they just have like this little roll thing they roll around with ice in it right it Mm -hmm. just can't this guy comes in he has a big bag and uh he asks her something and uh the 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 Bartenders like so you can't bring in drinks from outside, which is a normal rule mm-hmm. at a bar. You can't. You're supposed to buy the shit there. <laughs> and he's like, "It's just water. It's just water." And like she can clearly see it's not water. It's a yeah. beach bag with glass bottles inside of it, I right? Mean, and there's a <laughs> it's like, and also like this. There was technically water. He had this mason jar, like a big Kool Aid mason jar in there as well. Yeah. And then she's like, "Sir, you can't." And he, she's like, "You can." She's like, you got to leave it outside. Like, you can buy your water. And he's like, I don't want to buy your fucking water. Like, he's yelling now. And yeah. it's like, the, okay, because you think it's a classical guitarist. So, like, yeah. his volume is to the floor. All right. And he's up here. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And he just starts yelling. And uh, uh, I'm friends with the bartender. And she, uh, you know, his stature, he was a big guy. She's yeah. Not big at all. And so she's, like, worried for her life. Right? Yeah, that's fair. And so, like, people get up and uh J- actually jared you I walk went, over oh I, w- I went up there to buy this is before he even walked in i went up there to buy just a bottle of water for you and for me and he was so i'm just standing there watching him scream at this girl and i was like <laughs> he was like he first he was talking about how he, he had water he wanted water i was like i'll buy you a water it's one dollar and he's then he's like i don't want your fucking water and then he turns to her and i was like i was like you're yelling and this guy's playing you need to get the fuck out yeah. and and he was like like he like he turns to me and he had this like lopsided look on his face <laughs> and I was like fuck what did I do he just <laughs> opened, just let the demons I out. opened a Pandora's box yeah. with this guy and then the owner and like some other big like open micers like came and like pushed him outside and then he's outside in the in the sidewalk screaming because well, we're inside because we're still inside you watching come, you sit back down and we're with your dad yeah and we're just like we're trying to watch this classic guitar and all we can yep. hear outside is get the fuck out of here <laughs> get the fuck you bitch get the fuck and like just screaming oh my and God. we're just like trying to sit down we're like pushing the- it down and then we hear a bottle <laughs> smash on the ground oh. or something. and we're all like yep time, time to, to go, go outside time, <laughs> to go, time to go look and, yes uh, we go out there and we see it <laughs> see the bag on the ground there's just glass everywhere <laughs> that's like messy <laughs> and there's yeah. like this one particular dude is really like like pushing him like you need to leave he's like they, barking at him bar- barking because mm-hmm. like you you let the the reptile brains are now here yeah you know what i mean the eyes have gone black it's just instinct <laughs> now they're in the street and dude dude starts fucking like squawing up dude. Oh <laughs> like my in God. the middle of the street the cops came dude the funny he had like a confederate flag on there was this one dude who <laughs> it just said cat, rebel I mean, it just said oh rebel and there was this <laughs> <laughs> I said one, characters, didn't I? It's yeah. getting one, wild in Kenosha. Man. One, he's like down the street now, and this one kid keeps following him, and everyone's like standing back, and everyone's now getting annoyed at this dude who's like taunting him. Uh huh. And uh, this dude, like, he's like, "You got a rebel hat on. You're a fucking traitor. You're a fucking traitor." <laughs> and the dude, the dude that's like causing the problem, turns back. He's like, 
And he's like, you're walking around with your thumb up your ass, buddy. Oh, my <laughs> the God. The whole group is, like, <laughs> losing it now. Like, it was so funny. We went from... Like this guy's a danger to the community too. This guy's a comedian. Yeah, <laughs> this was his set. Like, this was him. It's performance art. He's yeah. performing. <laughs> it was guard. so good. And but that has yeah. happened every time I go to an open mic. Like I'm afraid to go to more open mics because they're gonna get violent. Like they yeah, got progressively dude. more violent. But that's the nature of these things, man. Because you go to an open mic, forget a house show. Mm-hmm. House show, everyone's in tune. Mm-hmm. So you've got some problems. You know, there's a few house shows in. Generally Kenosha. speaking, you, you know. there's some things. The biggest worry that in Kenosha, and this is probably across the board, uh-huh. has been minors. Yeah. Has been minors coming to house shows and 26-year-olds hitting on them. Yeah, that's fair. That is that has been the biggest problem that a lot of Kenosha house shows have had. And the majority of like the places to go mm-hmm. have been like formally shut down because oh, of that. Oh, yeah. Because, and it's like, man, Jared and I were like, man, that'd be cool one day we could own a place where we have a house show. And I was like, yeah, if I, if I had a stage, I would be like, we, I would introduce the band. So imagine North Warren up on the stage. You know, you're getting excited. <laughs> you're not even on the microphone yet. I'm up there introducing you. Sure. This is how it would go. I'd be like, hey, everyone. Glad everyone came out. You remember, it was, you know, it'd be like, it was $5 at the door. If you didn't pay, you know, please, this is for the bands and stuff like that. And then I take out a gun and I go, <laughs> if I find out any one of you motherfuckers <laughs> are trying to hit on any minors here, we will take care of it. We have a just no sit. tolerance policy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for pedophilia. For pedophilia. And I just tuck it back in. Everyone would be nervous. I'd be like, now let's have a great time. Like, <laughs> enjoy your beers. Enjoy the music. Enjoy your right. beers. Enjoy the music. No, because that's the thing, man, because everyone assumes that that's a that that's a no no. Yeah. But the people who are pedophiles don't care. You got to yeah, like, it's a real problem and I don't I don't know if you ever had problems with that but like you did. You had a problem we you you we had a problem with that at a show. It wasn't a problem during the show but after the fact. Like I was I was running this uh this online magazine and like platform for artists we were trying to throw house shows early on and uh we didn't really have a place to throw you know bigger shows more like upbeat rowdy shows Mm -hmm. but we somehow got in contact with this guy that we knew through people who had a basement whole area that was available to us i was like okay cool basement shows seem like the best route for that you know Mm -hmm. it's kind of more compact a little more private and we did like an invite only thing you know, everybody who came, I, I pretty much knew everybody who came, you know, and the, I knew the people they knew. So it was cool. Like, we had three sets. It was pretty fun. Uh huh. I find out, like, two weeks after the show that the person whose house it was had been, like, stalking and texting this 16-year-old girl, Jesus two 16-year-old Christ, girls that I man. knew, like, a few months prior. Yeah. yeah. I was like, uh what do we do about that? Like, what do we do about that? Like, yeah. do we, obviously first we cut contact with them, but I was like, we had young people there. Right. And mm-hmm. the, this guy's friends were like, not, they knew about his behavior and didn't do shit about it. Hmm. So like my, I'm, I'm, my trust in people was fucked up. Like mm-hmm. you'd think people who are, are hosting music want the best for everybody. Right. Meanwhile, and sometimes in their outside life, they, like they really are very selfish in that way and mm-hmm. twisted. Yeah. Well, there was uh, one thing I don't know if you saw. I don't, I, did you ever get into the Orwells out of Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I used to like them, and then now I don't like them yeah, right. because it's like they same shit happened to them, man. Right. Like, there were just some ended up being some weirdos. Well, there was a moment for like a six month period where, like every day, yeah, or not every every week was like another like the Orwells. You had that in the Burger uh, Burger Records were like the butter tones and shit mm-hmm. like that. Like that whole thing yeah. Was shut down. Yeah, there was a a stretch of bands, you know, like just coming. I, I guess I guess when there's that momentum, it yeah. it feels like for those victims, like now is the time. Maybe I should right. speak out. Which is because right. like mm-hmm. being local artists. Everyone wants the scene to be safe for everybody. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants that shit. And it's like, you know, if you do see a band that's like, you find out some fuck shit with them, it's like, call them out. Fuck right. them. Get yeah. them out. Because it's like, you you want people to come to your shows and be like, it's just to have a good time. Mm-hmm. You don't want to worry about fucking dumb shit happening. Right. Yeah. Luckily, I haven't seen too much of that be a problem for the shows we've played. I mean, I know we haven't played a, a ton as of recently, but even just like, underage people like even under 21 
coming to shows, it's like, I kind of get it now that I'm a little bit older. It's like, you don't want underage kids getting drunk and then like doing dumb it's shit. Silly. It's it like, silly. I get it when I was 18, I was like, dude, I just want to see the music, but it's like, I don't know. You just, like you said, you just want to keep it safe and like be responsible. Right. You got to know you might attract like a, a more wild or uh, uncautious mm -hmm. crowd sometimes. Yeah, like you yeah. might, mm -hmm. that's kind of just the nature of playing, say in like Milwaukee, like bigger city. Like mm -hmm. we, there's crazy shit in Kenosha. Yeah. We, well, like, we have the wrong crazy shit. We have the wrong, we have the, we have, <laughs> we get like, all the wrong crazy We have kind shit. of boring, Milwaukee too. I mean, we shit. have, yeah. but yeah. But it's better when it's like, at least the venues around here are pretty safe. Mm -hmm. Like they're pretty, they're pretty like well, like efficiently run. Yeah. You know, a lot of eyes. But like, I don't know. You you we don't want to lose the freedom of the house show or of mm. the like the private event like so that. You gotta go you on know? stage with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that might be this. There's rules. <laughs> right. I have the right half to the bear arms show. at a house show. Yeah. Half, right. half half the house show may leave because they feel yeah. uncomfortable. But yeah, that's like you maybe know. three quarters. But hey, you still have yeah. this that twenty five percent. That's like <laughs> I feel safer now. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be those are the real ones though. You'd be like these guys came to fucking party. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, what is um? Uh, what's I mean, now? Are you from both? You from Milwaukee? No. Well, technically I am, but I went to school my whole life um, up in Germantown because I moved there when I was really young, and then I moved back to Milwaukee when I got out of high school. So I would consider myself a Milwaukee native. Okay. Um, yeah, I grew up like 45 minutes north of Milwaukee. Okay. Are you by Sheboygan? <clears throat> uh, it's more like west. West. West north. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, and then I moved to Milwaukee a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. Yeah. Right. yeah. What was like art, any sort of art scene like in your guys outside of the city growing up? You know, Germantown was... It was, it was very like, if you were into art, it was kind of niche because like Germantown's is like a jock school, you know, it's like really? we're very focused on football and basketball and um, all the sports really. So I was kind of the, like I had an AP art class and I think there was maybe eight of us in the whole class. And this is out of a school of like a thousand kids. Whoa. Right. Yeah. So it was like, it, it was cool because we had two art teachers and like there was a ton of courses to take, but like as far as the whole scene goes, there wasn't like a ton of people really into art. Right. Cause I started out painting before music and throughout high school, it was like, it was always painting and music. Cause I had those art classes and I kind of just like, it was like, sweet, I don't have to buy these materials. Right. right. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, Hartford was like, yeah, football was huge. Mm -hmm. Hunting was huge. Yeah. And like, that's kind of it. Driving to, <laughs> right. driving yeah. to school on yeah. your tractor was huge. Right. Yeah, drive, yeah, tractor day, driving to school on your tractor was huge. Yeah, uh, that was I, a thing. Wait, <laughs> I had a friend grow up. <laughs> That's a real thing, man. Yeah. They did I, it. I had a friend grow up in the county who said, yeah, they had a problem because, like, the resource officer would, like, go through the lot and, like, a bunch of kids, it would be hunting season. And, mm -hmm. like, after school, they'd go up north uh, and they'd be like, yeah, yeah. they had a big problem because, you know, people bringing, like, rifles and shotguns and they just leave it in their cars <laughs> yeah. and, like, you can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, what's it like? I mean, are you, where are you guys at in Milwaukee? Like a uh, place. So I lived wise? in, uh, on the East side for a few years and North Warren, I lived on that street. That's where the name came from. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, that first album, the house, that was my old house. Okay. Cool. Um, nice. but anyways, now I live out in Bayview. Um, so I live kind of by the airport on the okay. South end. Yeah. Um, yeah and he i also live in baby yeah is so red killer there um it's not too bad like i get a garage which is nice and That's like nice. i do um, not have a garage i, wish I get I laundry garage. and it's like <laughs> for what it is I, I guess it's fair but um i live in a really old building so i guess right. for something really nice it'd probably be pretty expensive right because that's kind of like a, a kind of a thriving scene it's, it's yeah. trendy i feel it's like it's pretty trendy yeah. yeah that's where everyone wants to live right now mm -hmm. well it's, it is because it's how it's interesting how driving you know i only i've never lived in milwaukee mm -hmm. I've, I've lived in kenosha my whole life i hope i have a year left here we actually <laughs> just moved into our apartment yesterday oh yeah so I, I, when our lease is up i'm bailing um i would like to go move to milwaukee yeah uh we were we almost moved to milwaukee 
this year because uh, we found a place. I really wanted to be by Brady Street. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go over there. And I, I like those old houses over there. And we, yeah. We found like a an upper that had like in a uh, unit washer and dryer mm -hmm. that was, uh, dude, it was nine twenty a month. Which Dude. Yeah. Um, the east side for the amount of space you can get is like, that's probably going to be the cheapest option. Right. Because like, dude, I, I, uh, my buddy just moved into this like <clears throat> three bedroom apartment and he's splitting with his roommate and i was like dude how much you pay for rent and he's like uh 850 and i'm like boy. total <laughs> and i'm like holy shit dude yeah. like i live in a one bedroom apartment and i play i pay more than that out in bayview um but the thing about the east side that's nice especially for artists and musicians is you can be loud pretty much any hour if you find yeah. the right spot like if you find a duplex like i lived in a house like and I, that was right off Brady too, so I was I could be playing drums at two in the morning and nobody Dad, gives a shit. That's so See? nice. Yeah, that's so but nice. now that's what we should have done. I'm but now my neighbors hate captain. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like it was me. <laughs> no, but the that's a, we the, like we don't have a. We were worried about sound, but like the like I do everything out of my headphones. Yeah, like, I don't. I don't. Uh, that was one thing that I thought about for a long time when we switched genres. I was like, oh yeah, I don't have to play my amp because mm -hmm. like right. I left at my mom's house if I want to go play the guitar, but like. I do everything like amp sims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do everything simulated. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if you learn how to mix that, you get pretty, in pretty some good cases, tones, yeah. it's like what it is. Like right. Some people right. not tell the difference, but <clears throat> that's cool though. I mean, obviously important to mm -hmm. be able to be loud. As Absolutely. You mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I think it's weird because going to uh, Milwaukee, like that city is interesting because like, obviously Summerfest is uh, it's odd to have Summerfest in Milwaukee. It's cool that it's there, mm -hmm. but the fact that that really ha is the largest, it's not the largest music festival by people, uh -huh. but like act wise, it's right. really cool that that's there. Like, it's not hard to get into Summerfest. Yeah. You just yeah, apply. Not at all. Yeah. It's, yeah. You just apply. And that's like, as a Wisconsin native, mm -hmm. that's like, that's bucket list you gotta mm -hmm. go play at yeah. Summerfest. even if you're at the fucking tiki stage who gives <laughs> right. a fuck like you gotta go play there dude yeah we played yeah. there a couple times and i actually just re when i was booking these shows recently i reached out to Summerfest. i just hit up their dms on instagram and i was like uh i don't even know what i said but they were like yeah submissions start in december on reverb nation if you're interested in your band playing there and it's, they make it really accessible for like local acts. That's cool. Which is really cool. Yeah. So let's do that. Yeah. We we, do that's that. coming up. We can let's do that. Do that and yeah. then get banned from it. Good. We'll stop the set. <laughs> we'll stop the set and be like, all right, we're switching to the podcast now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, pull up. Uh, Bryce the chairs, get the, the chairs. chairs yeah. Just like, get the chairs out. Yeah. Like someone walks off stage and they come sit down in the desk. Like, welcome <laughs> to episode 50. Oh no, we'll be at like 70. 51. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that's that's a, a dream to play there. But also, I mean, just to do it because again, Wisconsin local. But <clears throat> the it's like five minutes. Left. Five minutes cool. left. Thank you. I'm not going to go into the topic I'm going to go into now then because it was going <laughs> to be a big topic. <laughs> but I will cease to do that. Um, <laughs> the only thing that uh, like I just I don't know. Every time I've been to Milwaukee, it's like uh, I just like feel good. Mm -hmm. doing that i mean sometimes you walk around and you're like it smells bad but yeah that's, you know <laughs> well, it's it part, part of the charm is part of the charm is it's a little yeah. it's a little grimy and mm -hmm. some of them cities yeah. are i think all cities are like that yeah. really but, but our earlier episodes we we talked a lot of shit about about wisconsin, about, about wisconsin but like yeah we focused certainly will. on milwaukee like because we were new to like driving around there we drove around in the winter a lot there at yeah. night and we like i guess we were just really we were really feeling struck by like how how old and sad buildings and people and and the community felt mm -hmm. so like to know that there's a scene yeah that we haven't even been you able to tap into the right places that's exactly it right. man yeah. like when i was growing up i was dead set on leaving milwaukee and even wisconsin like i was like I'm going to Colorado or like I'm going somewhere else, right. New York or like some big city. And I had all these like dreams of like, right. Oh, it's going to be so much cooler and better. And I want to meet all these people. But like over the last, I'd say five years, Milwaukee has really grown on me. Like I've, I've, I've met so many cool people. I think the music scene, everybody's so down to earth and supportive. And even outside of the music scene, like everybody's just very, 
um, for the most part, like nobody wants to start trouble there. Everybody's just kind of coexists, cool. you know? Very so that's good to know. Well, with that, what do you, you go over again? What do you guys got coming up? Let's, let's hear the socials. Yeah. That? Where can we even find North Warren? Well, um, North Warren band on Twitter, Instagram, you can just type in North Warren on Facebook. Um, I think on YouTube, you got to type in like North Warren music or like, okay. uh, you find us. Um, and yeah, I, I primarily use Instagram. So North Warren band, that's the handle. Very cool. Uh, we got some shows coming up December 4th, December 10th, December 18th, January 8th and January 15th. And potentially more after our mm-hmm. conversation in the car today. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. We got to get people out because winter, people hide away. Yeah. But yeah. no, go the fuck out. Go to shows. Mm-hmm. Go walk yeah. around in the city. Give them something to do. There's a, yeah. Yeah, and there's a few bands here in town that like if you would like to get into the gigs here and like have a branch out here too. Yeah, absolutely. Talk some of the, about that at the show. Um, yeah. But cool. Very cool to guy. Very cool to have both Bailey and Luke here. Yes, very sir. Cool. Yeah. Thanks awesome. for having us. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. It was a good conversation. It was. It was yeah. Um, you can find the, don't look at me like that. You can find the <laughs> Intensive Podcast uh, everywhere. Um, uh, playing on your mom's Roku, um, at your Divorcee Dad's <laughs> Series XM, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. We're on Sirius XM? No. Okay. Not yet. Uh, not, yet. <laughs> not yet. No, actually never. Um <laughs> Uh, all the things find us everywhere we're switching this episode will be out Friday Sick. we're switching to a single release every week Friday so you'll see us Friday and uh, probably around now nah, we won't do a 12 a.m. release it'll probably be like in the morning we'll do something like that I perfect I, and then we'll also give a huge thanks to our editors our production team that's a beauty Let's <laughs> thank thank you to Bryce as well, and then uh, also the people who give us the opportunity to record here at the space. www.ikenosha.com. Please go check this out. We have all the links and stuff in the link tree and whatnot on all the socials. But thank you. We had it's episode forty-five. North Warren. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for coming. <laughs> thank you for having us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.